Hi everyone, and welcome back to PCA's Garage. It is Tech Tactics Live, episode six. If you haven't joined us before, it's sort of a new format that we've, um, we've tried out. And uh, since we can't really go anywhere to feature events or look at projects, um, we're just doing it here at PCA headquarters and we're bringing the content here and sharing it with you live. Um, we've had some pretty interesting subjects that we covered in the past. So if you haven't uh, looked at the five previous shows, you might want to do so. I will warn you, it might uh, put a little dent in your wallet because you might end up buying the stuff like I did, like this uh, puck to lift uh, my 996, this little tool that Rod Emery recommended. Of course, I ordered. And believe it or not, uh, in our most recent episode, we talked about dryer sheets. And I know one of uh, our local members, Chris Scott here, in, in Maryland, he went on a trip and uh, used a, uh, a bounce sheet to, to clean off the front end of his car. So there's some good tips in other videos, but today we're gonna talk about, um, actually it's the 25th anniversary of the 993 Turbo. Um, so we're gonna do something special with that. Obviously from the title, you know, we're gonna be uh, bringing it together as a family reunion with the 992 Turbo S. First and foremost, if you like the series of videos, make sure you like and subscribe at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, here in Maryland, restrictions have opened up a bit. I do have, um, I, I'm able to bring you know, people into the office. Of course, we have to stay you know, at least six feet apart and such. So I have a second person in the garage, which I'm super excited uh, to have. But before I introduce him, I wanna thank Frank Wiesman of Porsche Cars North America the product spokesperson for the 911 Boxster and the Cayman for allowing us the use of the 992 Turbo S that we have. Um, also, I'd like to give a shout out and thank you to Gregory Brown, a local PCA member that owns the 993 Turbo um, that we are, um, you'll see pictures of a little bit later. As far as uh, those of you that have been on the show before or watched the show before, you know we have raffle prizes and we have a uh, Porsche swag bag. Actually, we have two of them. So make sure you put your name and uh, what region you're from in the chat box. I have my phone here so I can see you guys, um, see you guys uh, ch uh, checking in. So if you have questions, but check in because if you check in by 8.30, you'll be entered into the drawing to, to uh, get uh, one of the raffle prizes. So back to the person I'm excited that's here with me today in the garage properly way more than six feet away from me but still next good to 10 the, feet 10 feet 10 feet uh still next to the 992 and that's our editor-in-chief of porsche panorama and pca content director uh rob sass rob welcome welcome and you know i know normally we sit next to each other and we take it for granted in the office and we haven't done so in about three months it's yeah pretty cool to see your mug up it's close. It's good to see you too, boo. <laughs> usually, usually I see you on Microsoft Teams or, or Skype or, or Zoom or something, so it's actually nice to see you in person, so welcome. Yeah, well, I'm wickedly nearsighted. My glasses are on, so I, <laughs> you're a blur, but... All right, so let's get to the episode and what it's all about. 25 years ago, 993 Turbo was introduced at the Geneva Auto Show, and it was, you know, a superstar. Um, you know, as an anniversary celebration, why not bring it together with its modern day version, the 992 Turbo S, and let's talk about them. First, let's get out of the way. It, it was expensive back then, a vehicle, yes. and then today it's still an expensive vehicle. Yes. So let's not talk just about the price, because if you have to ask, um, you know, it's probably not for you. So we're just going to talk about the cars themselves and not about the price and whether or not they're worth it. We can't give away the spoiler, though, about the relative price <laughs> adjusted for inflation. Okay, let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. So, so back in the day, so before we get to that, so this car here starts at 203 or so starts. So probably with a couple options, you're looking at 225. So let's say 250. Yeah. That's a lot of dough nice for a car. Nice house money and a lot of parts. That's of a lot of dough. That's yeah. a lot of dough. However, the 993 Turbo S, tur let's say the 993 Turbo when it was introduced in... Uh, 1996. 96? Yeah. 
That car was starting at 99, about 101, 103. With options. With options. Which in adjusted, today's money is just under $170,000. That was, yeah, adjusted, yeah. it's about $170,000 right. in today's money. And that was not the Turbo S. Right. So Turbo S back then was about 150. So that adjusted for today is like 237 or is it 260? Let's say 240. 240. So that car was 240. This, this car is a better deal. This is, hey, that's math. I wasn't a straight A student in math, but I know that's, that's pretty good, right? Do we, we don't want to talk about what a 993 Turbo S is worth today though, do we? No, no. Okay. okay, all right. So we've talked about enough about price. Let's talk about the cars. Um, let's just, just, just do a quick intro on the cars. They're both stunning. Um, one's a 993 Turbo, one's a 992 Turbo S. Mm -hmm. The question I get all the time from members, because I get a little confused, like, so is it a 911 or is it a 992 or is it a 993? And they don't understand why we refer to 992. Why don't you share with folks? And you want to look at the camera over there. Right. Well, quite honestly, it's confusing as hell. Look over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really confusing. They're just, they're, they're project numbers, they're internal project numbers, and it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense because the, the car whose 25th anniversary we're celebrating now is the 993. This is the 992, which savvy viewers will recognize is one digit earlier than the 993, which is the older car. But the folklore was back in the day, when there were projects in Porsche's portfolio, when they got to Project 901, that was the start of the, what we know as a 911, but they couldn't call it a 901 because? The trademark issue with Peugeot. Exactly, so that was Project 901, which then became Project 911. But after that, I have no idea how or why it 964. You went from 997 to 991, 964 to 993 to so, 996 to 997 to 991 to 992. It's super confusing. All right, hopefully we haven't thoroughly confused you, but let's go to the specs. Can we bring up the spec photo of the, the 993 Turbo versus the 992 Turbo S? It should be coming up. All right, so it's up. So we talked about the MSRP. Horsepower wise, the 993 was around 400, 408 horsepower. This new model here at 640. Torque numbers you can see there. What really got to me is, would you have guessed that after all these years, with all the things that a modern car has to contain. Not to mention the relative size difference when looking at the two cars that the difference in weight between the two cars is how many? It's about 300 pounds. 300 pounds. 300 and some change, 340, 350, something so like that's, that. So that's that's a little build magic there too. So I'm sure it has to do with aluminum, composites. composites. Yeah, uh, light, light, steel, lightweight, lightweight glass. Lightweight glass. We'll talk about later. Yep. But the modern day car is only 300 pounds heavier than the 993. That's crazy. It um, is. Top speed. Uh, let me just read something to you real quickly. Back in the day, um, Motor Trend, do, 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 do. Motor Trend hailed the 993 Twin Turbo as the most brutally accelerating and best handling, best braking Porsche ever sold in the USA, striking fear with their with the 3.6 liter heart. Now the heart of the new car is only 0.2 liters larger, and it's the amount of horsepower that's coming out, it goes from zero to 60, the old car from 4.4, which was supercar territory back then. It was, I think it was like 3.9. Yeah. 3.8 or 3.9. The new car, 2.6 seconds, zero to 60. And if you ever have the opportunity to experience launch control in a Turbo S or even a Turbo or even Actually, a 991. Actually, check the not to 60 um, for the 993. It is, it's, it's mind boggling that the, that amount of mass can move that quickly. Um, it really is amazing. So let's go with, um, we're gonna introduce a new thing called true or false. So we're gonna throw a statement out there. Hey, zero to 60, three, seven for the 993. Three, seven, yeah. okay, that's pretty yep. good. All right, so true, false. Uh, the 993 has better power to weight ratio, true or false. 
do, do, do. We just talked about weight. We talked about 640 horsepower in the 992. The answer is? Uh, it is not. Power to weight ratio better in this car. Power to weight ratio. So for all those that have commented about how size has grown and da, 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 at the end of the day, power to weight ratio in the 992 is better than the 993. Yep. We I should, would have never guessed that. We should but also it, it talk sense. for a second about the 996 turbo, which is something we were discussing earlier off camera, which strangely enough, the successor to the 993, the 996 twin turbo, uh, which had about 415 horsepower in standard turbo form, did zero to 60 in about 3.8 or 3.9 seconds. So it's one of the few cases where the new car was actually a bit slower than the car that it replaced, something that would never be tolerated today. Yeah, I mean, the, that just would not be acceptable. No. Right, and... No, it's, it's, a, it's a complete horsepower and speed and acceleration arms race that's going on right now, particularly with the introduction of the C8 Corvette. You will never see that again, I think, in, in Porsche world, where the outgoing turbo outperforms in any metric the new car. So, since we're talking about metrics and, and, and power and, and power race, so on and so forth, let's... We, we were very fortunate to drive this car for a couple of days. I've, I've, we've also driven the 993 Turbo. Let's give first driving impressions. Let's start with the grandfather, the, the 993 Turbo. What's your opinion of driving those? The 993 Turbo, when I first stepped into it, um, I'd had a lot of experience with a, an original 930 from, I think it was an 87 or an 88. It was my family for a while. And that car was very much the unchained beast that everybody remembers it as. A car that, that was a true Widowmaker with no driver's aids, obviously rear wheel drive only, and a car that very much would try to kill you if you did anything foolhardy or, or stupid. The 993 was, to me, the turbo tamed. It had all, of, it was still a very analog car, but it had all of the, the visceral aspects of, of the 930 and the 964 turbo but with all-wheel drive that, that really, for the first time, tamed the beast in the turbo. That's the best way that I can put it. So, so would you say you went from like a G-body mm -hmm. to 993 turbo, How, what about 964, the, the, the in-between? I, what do you I think? never spent a whole lot of time, I, maybe one or two drives in a 964 turbo, but to me, it was a lot like an original 930 with some of the rough edges honed off. Yeah. So yeah, still so, rear wheel drive, obviously no driver's aids, you know, slightly wider tires, I think, it's really the only means of, of you know, controlling the, the, the oversteering, the tail happiness of the car. But to me, the 993 was the real revelation. It was the car that brought a lot of the technology from the 959 into a car that semi-mortal people could buy. And the 959, as everyone remembers, was, was all-wheel drive and, and twin turbocharged and very expensive and, and a composite, you know, largely composite body shell, if I remember right. Um, but the knock on the car was, it's a quarter of a million dollars, you can't buy it here. When is this tech ever going to find its way into the broader Porsche lineup? And that's really, I think, what happened with the 993. Yeah, for me, the 993 is, you know, a bucket list car. I remember when it was introduced in Arena Red and I just kind of fell in love with that package and, and seeing it in magazines. And uh, finally, when I had the opportunity to drive one, um, you know, a, I have a G-Body car, so it was very familiar in a lot of ways, but it was so much more refined. And of course, the power, um, man, yeah. to, to have that much power in sort of a G-Body G platform, um, it was something that I would have never dreamt about having. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the idea of them making something even better or something so much better just boggles my mind how they yeah. could do that. Yeah. Um, I, I love the 993 Turbo. I mean, I, I really, I, like I said, I thought it was just an absolute revelation the first time I drove it. And it's, it scares you a bit, right? It's, it has this factor about it. It is it's not like a 930 about off on with the turbos and, and going into corners and lifting or whatever that, that people always talk about, you know, early turbos. The 993 turbo is much more civilized, but at full tilt, 
it still demands a lot of respect and you're, you're hesitant to dip in too deep um, and, and having that sort of uh, threat uh, all the time while you're driving it makes it a really fun car. I mean, there is no please save me button. PSM. There, there is not. There is a turbo, <laughs> and the brakes, as good as they are, are not the ten piston brakes that this car has. And you know that when you dive deep into a corner with a nine nine three turbo, you have a you have to have a very good relationship with that brake system to know right. its limits. Whereas this newer car, and when we get into it in a bit, it just makes you into a superhero. Really um, there was a question. There was a question on YouTube about why this car has European plates. Because this is not a US spec model. This is a rest of the world uh, uh, 992 turbo. And uh, those are actually uh, PR department plates from the factory in Stuttgart. So this car, the differences are fairly subtle. This car has the gas particulate filter that the European Union requires that you won't get on North American cars. It's a practical matter. You're not really going to notice much of a difference. Um, some people say that the gas particulate filter mutes the sound a little bit in this car. Um, you know, that'll remain seen when, you know, obviously we can compare it to a North American spec car. But this is a very good sounding car. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's one thing, it, uh, you know, it's a sport exhaust, which is, new from the factory for a turbo mm -hmm. and um, it remedies some of the issues I think of previous water-cooled uh, 911 turbos. I mean certainly the 996 twin turbo that I owned was a very quiet car. Um, this makes all the right noises. So when I walked up uh, to this car and it was parked next to the 993 there were some obvious cues that you know, it's got a family resemblance, right? That's why it's a family reunion. But probably the, the thing that jumped out at the most at me was the hood. Um, those vertical lines down the center of the hood, we haven't seen those, we haven't seen those since the uh, 993, 993, right? 93, yeah. Right, because my 996 doesn't have them. And yeah. I, if I remember correctly, up yeah. until 991 doesn't have them. Yeah, it was the valley that led up to the cowl vent. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, it, it definitely harks back to that. I like it. I mean, it's otherwise it breaks up a surface that would be pretty large. So, um, you know, I think it does a nice job of breaking up the surface, harking back to the earlier car without being gimmicky. And as you walk around the car, even though this car is not a flashy color, um, there's a lot of things to just kind of like make your jaw drop. And I'm looking right now at the brakes. The ceramic brakes on this car the size of the rotors, it's, a tw I believe, a 20-inch wheel and a 21-inch wheel in the back. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing the braking power of that one rotor caliper setup is probably more than the braking power of a 964 it, of it's all four in total. the braking power of the space shuttle. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, those are massive. Yeah. Oh, and, and also, let's not forget, this car has been driven, 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 and these ceramics have thrown almost no dust, which is kind of cool. None I know whatsoever. some of us... Some of us that drive the older cars with more standard brakes, you take them out for a few yeah. hours and you have black wheels. Um, the, 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 the vents, the, the scoops, the, you know, the, very attractive. Um, I love the back. You and I kind of, I don't know how much you like it. Maybe you were talking about how when the rear wing in the back comes up yeah. while you're driving is in the way, but I love the back end of this car with, uh, I guess, the uh, C4S kind of light that, that connects yeah, the tail which lights. Is the, it's the very attractive. Thing. I like it too. I mean, I, the only gripe that I have is that, you know, Porsche has obviously made an effort to have sort of a, a standardized look to the, the back end of their cars, sort of the same layout, the tail light and, and that C4S kind of reflector panel that, that joins them. It's, it's really attractive, but I'm just not used to seeing that level of similarity across the, the four-door and the, the, the sports car lineups. So our viewers are watching a video that's showing a lot of the technology of this car. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's start from the front with the active aero. Um, as you put the car in sport, I believe, or sport plus, you have active aero that the chin spoiler comes down, the, the rear spoiler goes up, the ride height changes. 
Um, there's a lot of technology when you're just simply twisting that beautifully knurled steel dial. Um, what do you think about all that technology? Well, I think the way that they deploy the technology is, is amazing. And it's, let's face it, it's really, it's, it's fun to use. I mean, I, I'm with you. I love the tactile feel, the mode selector knob, and the steering wheel. Uh, and I love the fact that, that there's something discernible going on when you select different modes. And we shouldn't give short shrift to the, the wet mode either. Um, you know, yeah, I got you, to test it you out. You got to test out wet yeah. mode and I've, yeah. Just learned about. So tell me your experience about the wet yeah. mode. Yeah. Um, wet mode is, is amazing. Um, it does not automatically select, but you will get a prompt when, when the sensors detect that, that it's you know, a sufficient amount of, of rain to potentially be in a hydroplaning situation. And it recommends that you turn on the wet mode. But it dials up all of the, the driver's aids to the extent that it really, really makes it very difficult to get in trouble uh, in the wets, even in a, a hydroplaning situation in a 911, which I think is amazing, given the fact that, you know, what are the rear tires in this thing, like 385s or something like that? I yeah. Mean, it's a lot of rubber. And typically, you know, when you've got that big of a contact patch, you know, hydroplaning is, is, is all that more easy to, to, to happen. But it does a really, really good job of keeping things under control when wet mode selected. So all the technology um, in this car, what I, I believe it's for is you, you are able to combine usability with supercar performance, right? The wet mode makes the car safe when you're driving in yeah. non-ideal you know, driving conditions. But I know like that front axle lift and, and you know, if you really wanted to, when you were driving and you put it into normal mode, it's so simple, it's so serene and easy to drive. Almost, I dare, I'm not, I'm not gonna say the, okay, I'll say it. It can be boring if you choose it to be boring. And people want sometimes a boring car with no audible you know, sound from the exhaust or things are super quiet. What, what people are these? <laughs> these I, it's these not are me, not our it's people, not me, who? but it's, Again, no, I'm trying know, to be respectful here, yeah, but, the, but the, the, the idea is you can live with this car. I yes. mean, if it was your only car and you want to do everything, uh, I, I forgot who, I think maybe I was talking to you. I said, yeah. you can it, fit kids in the back. It, it, it would be silly for me to say, I want to I wanna daily ride a sport bike. Like that doesn't no. make sense. You cannot have that level of performance yeah. and use it, you know, reasonably as a daily driver. Yeah. Porsche has somehow figured that out because the performance envelope of this, you know, exceeds the sport bike in a lot of ways, but yet you can tone it down, way down, yes. and go get ice cream with the kids. Yeah, yeah, and I put my kids in the back of it. I don't think the rear seats are any larger than a 991. I, I certainly think they're more accommodating than a 996 or a 997, but the fact is, you know, if the driver and the passenger are not particularly tall people, there is more than adequate legroom back there for kids and, and even small adults and certainly child seats or whatever. So um, it is the usability of the car is is really high. OK, so usability. Most of you are bored about that. Usability. Let's talk about usability. Let's talk about freaking performance. This car whoo, a 993 turbo is fast. And Gregory, I love your car. You know, 400, and I, yours is tuned with a little bit of the roof stuff, so I know it's probably pushing yeah. 500, 550, and your car is fast. But once you've experienced a 992 Turbo S, your car is kind of fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think of the most nutty-ass thrill park ride that you've ever seen or ever been on. And that's 50% of the way to this car during launch control. You know, if you ever saw, like, those early, like, NASA films of astronauts on rocket sleds and their cheeks are doing oh, this I know. stuff. Have you ever seen that movie Spies Like Us where yeah. they're in the thing spinning around exactly. and the G-forces? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking like the right stuff where they're in the rocket sled and their cheeks are doing this. That's, that's how fast it is. If I haven't been descriptive enough, that it's amazingly yeah. fast. Your retinas back into your brain. You, you feel your brain hit the back of your skull. Yeah. Um, and it's, again, you can choose to drive that way, or you could choose to drive in a serene manner. But the, 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 whoever, whoever, is, whoever has the opportunity to own this car will have to have a very large level of restraint. Let's just put it, let's just say. Not to mention net worth, but we already okay, covered that. Okay, we're not talking about 
yeah. ability to buy. But I know. To, to have that kind of power, uh, and not just straight line, because we don't, you know, as Porsche yeah. files, we don't just talk about straight line, we talk about handles. When that thing goes into a corner, um, it's got so much grip. I've been into very familiar corners, you know, driving around the streets uh, where I live and with my various cars, I kind of know how much I'm gonna push, so to speak, in each car. And I can't, I didn't have a single time where this car pushed or I felt like yeah. it was not going to make the corner. I'm guessing that we both took the uphill decreasing radius off ramp from 29 south to 108. Possibly. Yes. Possibly. <laughs> um, but at, at legal speeds, of yes. course. Without um, a Honda Odyssey in front of us. So let me, let me share with you another, uh, it's not really a performance thing, but something that really um, I think contributes to, again, people have said, oh, that car is so big, da, 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 da. Uh, but when you drive it, it feels very compact, especially when you make a U-turn. That was truly amazing. And that's when you realize that, the first time you realize that the rear wheel steering is not a gimmick. The turning radius of this car is just absolutely remarkable. Um, you know, it will do a U-turn anywhere. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, you know, Chevy Spark turning radius. It's yeah. really incredible that a car this size can can do that. But, you know, the thing is, I mean, rear wheel steering, I think until Porsche got into the game, it was pioneered, I think, by Nissan with the, I want to say the Maxim or something in the, you know, the early 90s, late 80s. A four-door sports coupe. Yeah, exactly. But I think SC. people looked at it as, yeah, it's kind of gimmicky, and I really can't feel what it's doing. And the Prelude but, had it. I remember the Prelude yeah, back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But in this car, I mean, it gives the car the agility around town, but also the nimbleness that, that belies, you know, its size and its weight when you're driving in a, a spirited manner. Yeah. And in the more recent iterations of the 911 turbos, people would, you know, in that price range, you're saying, should I get a GT3, GT3 RS, or should I get a 911 turbo? And the, the discussion would typically go like this. Oh, if you're looking for the perfect track tool, you should be going for the GT3. Oh, if you're looking to tour, but tour in a quick manner, then maybe the 911 Turbo is yeah. for you. Not necessarily so with this car. I mean, I, you know, I think they're trying to close some of the gap between this car and the, the GT cars. Um, just, you know, some of the options that you can get now, the, the sport suspension, the, you know, the sport exhaust, I mean, the car, has, if you want, a little bit harder of an edge to it than it did before. I think even in its normal mode, um, the car rides more aggressive. Maybe it's just me, or maybe I'm not remembering correctly, but I think it, in its normal mode, it rides a little bit more aggressive than previous 991 turbos, 997 turbos. Um, but then when you definitely put it into sport, it feels very, very sporty. And it feels very GT3-like. Uh, however, it doesn't have um, I mean, it's very composed. You don't hear as much of the mechanicals as you do in a GT3. So depending on what your, your, your flavor or what you're looking to do, but I mean, this, it's capabilities all wrapped into one car. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's go to a true or false, true or false. Throw up that screen. True or false. The 992 turbo will be available in a manual. Do, do, do. I love I love manual gear shifts, save the manuals, all that, but as of right now, it's PDK only. It's PDK only. Okay, well, disclaimer, we are not professionals, we are not Frank Wiesman, we don't know everything about this car, so we may be say, we might say something that is inaccurate. Please forgive us, please correct us in the comments, but this is just off. As far as, as, far as we know, all of the turbos yeah and, and i know i know right there are a lot of us watching a lot of us out there myself included that loves a manual transmission car a friend of mine who's watching right now he will only buy a manual car yes and we loved 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 the gt3 touring that we had absolutely absolutely ago. having said that would you take this car in a manual ah uh, you're asking me, or you're asking that? I, I, it's, Honestly, I'm putting you on the spot. I mean, you know how I come down with manual transmissions. You know, I am a confirmed three-pedal person. I love PDK on a track. 
Um, but for my daily driver, I just like the engagement of a manual transmission. That said, it's difficult to imagine a manual transmission in this car. It's, you know, just, you know, ripping off, you know, a one, two shift with all the power that this car has. Yeah. You're going to be bumping up against the rev limiter before you can grab second gear. I yeah. Think. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's. You know, I I, just I, I love think the, the PDK is probably the right gearbox for this. Car. I'm like you. I love the romance of shifting my own gears. I love when you do it right. I love it when you rev match and all that. Um, but a car with 640, and I'm sure you know, in a couple of years, this car is going to be a 700 horsepower car. The one-two shift, or coming on on, you know, when the power comes on. I was actually quite happy that both of my hands were on the steering wheel. I was laser yes. focused on where I was going. I wasn't worried about a money shift. Um, you know, but around town, again, just putzing along, if you go into kind of normal mode and say you're more focused on the company that's sitting in the right seat, um, you know, you, you, you kind of lose the engagement with the car not having a manual in it. I agree with that. But if I were able to purchase this car and take this car uh, with a uh, manual or, or PDK transmission, I think the PDK fits a character. It's just like yeah. a Cayenne. Uh, and please don't send me hate mail if you own a manual shifting Cayenne. I think they're cool, but I think an automatic Cayenne fits the characteristics and the use and the purpose of a Cayenne. Please, 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 and I don't send me hate mail because I said the five people that own a manual GTS I know, who I know, are doing I know. this right and, now. And then, and then, and then, and then add to all of that is they've got to sell these cars too, right? Yeah. So the buyers really dictate what they're going to produce. And guess what? Nine out of ten cars, people want PDK. So they can. Yeah. How can you? How can you justify offering a car that one out of every ten people are going to buy? Yeah. Well, it's you know they always say. Car makers should never listen to the enthusiast uh, market because you always steer them wrong. But I mean, the fact is, though, I mean, my only objection to it is no, is purely philosophical. It's not very logical at all. You know, it used to be that certainly, if you bought something like a Career GT, there was a certain level, there was a secret handshake, there was a certain level of of competence in knowing how to operate a manual gearbox and and you know do certain things that that you that was a prerequisite. To owning the car. That bar doesn't exist with this car. Justin Bieber could get in this car and drive it just fine. And, and please, that kind of bugs me. <laughs> uh, Bieber fans, please don't send him hate mail. Please yes. don't do that. He didn't mean to say that. Uh, but this car, someone asked on the chat, it is an eight-speed PDK. And I only know that because it showed up on the dash because it just shifts and knows exactly where you need to be all the time. Um, it has, of course, the paddle shifts, but the car is smarter than me. I just focused on driving. Um, let's talk about top speed, although you know there isn't enough room in the United States unless you're on the track to, and I, actually, I don't even know if there's on a track you could do top speed um, with this car because its top speed matches another supercar, which is 205 miles an hour. Carrera GT. Ah. You have a street car that has Carrera GT top speed capabilities? That's insane. Um, you know, all wheel drive, of course, you know, from, it's not from the 959, but technology has trickled down and it, they've kind of rolled it all into to one. It's amazing. One I mean, how, what the passage of time will do. I mean, look, what was it, maybe 10 years ago? A sub three seconds zero to sixty time was was considered, you know, like, hypercar. Yeah, hypercar like or theoretical, not even possible. Like breaking the sound barrier was, you know, thought about in 1946. You know that hey, we're just not going to. This is a mark that we're just not going to be able to break. And this car, you know, will will do it handily, um, you know, every day. And I think there's some part of this car that is. I would call it maybe future proofing the car mm -hmm. is I believe the PDK is reinforced because obviously the power, but I believe there is a, let's call it a space allocation or s capability for in the future to be hybrid compatible or something. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, certainly the architecture of the 992, there is room for, um, for 
electrification at some point in the future. Um, you know, I, I would guess that'll happen, you know, in the, the lower models first. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's room in the platform for it. So we all know the advantages of electric motors and seeing some amazing performance out of electric cars. Um, again, this car is already at, let's call it hypercar performance, zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Are you telling me that it can get quicker? I, I'm sure it can. I mean, <laughs> oh. this is Porsche. Of course it can get quicker. But I mean, let's think about what that means. I mean, because you know, this car at, at zero to 60 in 2.6 seconds, you know, is, I won't say that the sensation is, is uncomfortable, but you certainly are questioning yourself, you know, is, you know, is, is a, you know, is a non-autonomous car that is driving, you know, should it really be going any quicker than this on a public road? I mean, can you imagine you know, zero to 60 in, in 1.9 seconds. And it's hard for me to even imagine. And for some reason, too, this 2.6 feels exponentially quicker than the 3.8 or 3.9 that, that my 996 turbo would do. I mean, it's, it's only, it's 1.2 seconds, which, you know, it's, it's not that much time. Right, but right. For some reason, the sensation is just that it's twice as quick. Yeah. So, and so after all these years, the motor has only grown 0.2 liters, right? Mm -hmm. um, if they're able to increase motor size or incorporate the electric motor, it seems as though they have more ingredients, so to speak, to pull from their kitchen pantry yeah. to develop something even more crazy. And I kind of think that, that you know, I, there's only so much more development to be had in, in a purely internal combustion sports car at this point. I think that the next big leap in performance is going to come from some sort of, of hybrid electrification. I mean, you know, for heaven's sake, look at a Taycan. You know, that's yeah. just a shade slower to 60 than this guy. I think it's, what, 2.8 for a Taycan Turbo S? Yeah, like yeah, exactly, yeah. So, true or false, is this car the fastest Porsche that's produced now? I believe the answer I is true. Believe that's it it, it true. did knock the Taycan kind of off the perch a bit by a, yeah. maybe a few tenths of a second. Um, but I'm sure that's going to go back and forth here over the next couple yeah, of years. Yeah, but you know, I, I do think that, that uh, you know, steps will be taken to ensure the primacy of, of this car. Yeah. So let's, let's go to the interior of the car. We've talked about performance. We talked about the outside. Um, the interior, although it's a brand new car, 30 some years later, uh, it, for me in, in terms of a, a G body and such, uh, it still feels, actually this car probably feels more familiar in layout than a 991 or 997 did uh, in, because of the dash layout. Yeah, and we both spent time in, in 992 Carreras, so it, it really wasn't a huge shock. But uh, not to interrupt, but we could be testing out the wet mode right now. I don't know if the viewers yeah. can hear the I don't rain. know if you guys can hear. We have a metal roof, and it's yeah. raining incredibly hard, so I apologize. Yeah, if, so that's, if anybody hears that, that's the rain on the, on the metal roof. But, uh, yeah. The anyway, interior, uh, what I love about the interior is it's not too busy. As someone no. that I, I gave a ride... Um, they looked and said it's very clean. Um, I noticed that next to the shifter le lever, um, it doesn't have a whole lot of displays or buttons that you touch right there, which True. prior cars Unlike, did. You know, Panamera, and Panamera, and, and Cayenne right now, and it's that sort of haptic, you know, glass. Right, um, and you have more of like toggles uh, yeah. across the top of the dash, which I liked. I love I the tactile too. feel, and I love that I know that that third switch was for this, and the first switch was to raise the, the front end of the car. Yeah. Um, well, how do we feel about the, the gauges? I mean, it's very similar, obviously, to a non-turbo 992, but there is only one mechanical, one analog gauge left in the car. So there's the, red, the rev counter in the middle, and... It seems like all the money that they saved on on the other gauges they put into the into the rev counter, which it's is beautiful. beautiful. It, it's it is that really cool pre nineteen seventy three aluminum button in the middle of the the needle. 
and, and all and, that stuff. And we both are watch nerds, and I think many of our viewers are watch nerds too. And it looks like a timepiece just kind of yeah. right there in the center of your dash. It's beautiful, and I'll be honest with you, that's where all of your focus goes. I know yeah. you can get information about your car on the other screens, and you can flip through and whatever, but when you're driving, you're just... You know, that, that really just jumps out at you as a beautiful yeah, piece. Yeah, and it's a beautiful piece. Yeah. It really is. I mean, it's, it's a good comparison to a high-end watch. It's yeah. really gorgeous. The, um, the infotainment system, uh, the best yet. What I yeah. really enjoyed was the wireless the Bluetooth Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay. <laughs> Sounds silly, and against, I know, uh, I know you, you performance gearheads are going to scream at me and say that the only soundtrack I should be listening to is the sport mufflers. I get it. That's cool. Yeah, I love like it too. But when I'm sitting in traffic, it's kind of nice to have nice tunes and the Burr, Burmeister stereo Apple CarPlay combination is sweet. It is. And shout out to the Burmeister system, the speakers themselves and the doors, the golden speaker cover. Oh yeah. Very, very nice. And if we go back to Gregory's 993, Audio was sort of like an afterthought. They built the whole car and they said, let's put a single, a, din, <laughs> a single DIN radio yeah. and stick some six and a halfs in the doors. And yes, it produced audio, but it sounded terrible. Gregory, don't be mad. I love your car. <laughs> but it's just this car was everything was done in unison. Um, you know, the, the doors are designed for the audio system. The interior is designed for the audio system. A uh, really interesting feature that I had no idea why. All the windows. Yeah, why don't you tell, why don't you tell yeah. the viewers about this? Well, everybody is used to when they open the door of a 911. Well, can uh, you, can, actually, can you hop over there? Can you open the door? Because they can see the door when you do it. Sure. So I'll unlock it. So show them this door. So, I, so the window's down, and when you open it, can you see? It's kind of hard to, yeah. So the, 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 show them where it goes up. So the, when you open the door, your glass goes up about what three inches? Yeah, about two and a half. It goes up about inches. three inches. Yeah. And I had no idea why, but there's a very good reason of why that window goes up when the door is closing. Uh, it goes up to the position in the window track where it will not rattle. So that's the reason why the window does that when you open the door. Who would have thunk of that? I would not have, but you know, hey, it's Porsche's attention to detail. So they want to make sure that when you're shutting the door of your $200,000 plus 992 turbo, that the glass doesn't in any way it's vibrate. It's all in the details. Yeah. Uh, speaking of glass, this was the first time, oh, not the first time, maybe the second time, because the Carrera T has lightweight glass in it, right? Yes. Um, but this time I noticed it more, maybe because I spent more time behind the wheel in this car. And as I was looking in the rear view mirror, not for blue and red lights, just, you know, just knowing my environment, <laughs> just knowing my environment, I noticed there's something unique about lightweight glass. It is, and I noticed the same thing too. I, I wouldn't say that there's distortion in the glass, but it, it's, um, you know, it's not quite as laser straight and perfect as, as the standard glass. Um, so I wouldn't say it's distracting. It's no. just something I noticed, yeah. right? Because it's, you know, part of our responsibility when we're driving these cars is to, you know, find the good and the bad and yeah. report back. And honestly, I was really stretching to find some bad stuff. And I noticed. So, and, and, you know, if that's really, if, you know, if those. Are the but the reason why it is a bit distorted, I will take that little bit of distortion knowing that that glass is lighter. I mean, I, I would trade and that. It contributes to this car's shockingly low curb weight. Exactly. So, okay, the yeah. one thing, the one thing that was really distracting to me, and I hope, hopefully I'm being very respectful about this because um, the, the front glass has, as you've driven maybe some o older vehicles that have antennas, radio antennas or whatever in the glass. Oh, that hair in front of your glasses that you just can't. Yes. I, I don't know if we have a picture, but if you ever, I don't know yeah. if it's an all 992s or just this one or what, but there is an antenna sort of line in the glass that is above your forehead that looks like it's, it's not straight. It's kind of curved. So it almost looks like you have this strand of hair and you guys are laughing because you know I'm all about the hair. Um, the strand of hair across my face and I just wanted to like get it out of the way but I realized it was part of the antenna system. 
don't know why it's there. If any of you guys know why it's there, um, I'd love yeah, to know. Yeah, I mean, you know me. I'm kind of old school on this. I kind of miss the, you know, the Hirschman antenna and the right mm. front fender just watching the video. <laughs> no, we're not putting a power antenna on this no, car. No, I know, huh? I know, I know. But I mean, seriously, it's like one of the few cars we could just sit there and watch your antenna go up and down. All right. It is 845. The nine, well, okay. So someone, someone said the 918 Spider is actually the mm. fastest Porsche at 2.2, but that's not currently being produced. Production, yes. So this is the current fastest current production vehicle. But thanks for bringing that yes, out. We should have qualified that. But let me just say, just throw it out there. You're talking about a 918 Spider at 2.2, and this is at mm, 2.5. Uh, let's do a little math there, and I challenge you to tell the difference between 0.2 and 0.5 seconds. Yes. So today's value, it'll take what? About 1.3 or 1.4 million dollars to put a 918 in your garage. So this car looks like a huge we, we, bargain. And you're right. We forgot to talk about the 918. So here sits a drivable, daily drivable car with close to 918 Spider performance territory. Yeah. Crazy. It is crazy. Just crazy. All right. Um, just wanted to let you know who the people are for the winners for the Porsche swag bag. Uh, Mike S. and Verdon Ness. Mike S. and Verdon Ness, congratulations. Make sure you email us with your information. Uh, Porsche is still kind of like us getting back to you know the normal uh, scheme of things at their office, but they promised that when they get back, they'll put together a, a wonderful grab bag of uh, Porsche goodies and they will send it directly to you. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Man, we've hit a lot. Yeah. Any uh, questions out there? there? Let me just double check. Uh, 10 piston front calipers. I know that the Taycan has the 10 piston caliper up front. And by looking at it with my eye here, and again, I'm not an expert, I'm not the product specialist, but it seems every bit as large as the one that's on the Taycan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it, is it 10 piston? I don't know. Yeah, and it's, well, it's a huge upgrade. The previous car had six piston yeah. front calipers, if I remember correctly, so, you know. But what I can tell you, pistons. what I can tell you, driving at legal speed limits and having to brake swiftly, it, grabs it really does and um, your foot determines how quickly you want to hurl yourself into the seat belt <laughs> yeah um yeah, yeah. i mean plenty you can, of stopping you can get power the full suite of negative and positive g's with this car I mean, let's face it yeah the, the brakes are amazing the acceleration is incredible so you know choose your g-force well all right uh again the 992 turbo s thank you very much to Frank Viesman and Porsche Cars North America. Uh, Gregory Brown, thank you for allowing us to use your 993. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, again, please like, please subscribe. Some upcoming videos or upcoming topics will include paint correction. What is paint correction? When people say paint correction, what do they mean? Uh, we've got taking uh, proper uh, photos of vehicles with Michael Allen Ross. Uh, we might have um, a brake change on a Cayman. We have how to change rear uh, struts on the back of a Cayenne. So we're keeping a running list and if you want to comment down below as to something you would like for us to cover, maybe it's a project that's hands-on or just bring a car or subject matter uh, in here to discuss with you all please let us know we'll try to make it happen we only have an hour so make sure it's a fairly uh, reasonable project to do and with that I want to thank Rob thank you for joining us it's great to see you in person Good to see um, you too, I can't wait till we can be next to each other in the office again but we're gonna do what's right hopefully everyone at home in your family is healthy as you also go out and sort of get back to the norm, please take care of yourself and we'll see you at hopefully a PCA event. Uh, oh, speaking of PCA event, shout out to the Potomac region. I get to autocross um, oh, this weekend. weekend. And um, it won't be a normal autocross as we know it because we have to adjust. And so when regions are opening up these events, they're gonna ask you to do things that 
aren't the norm with regards to social distancing, with regards to maybe a mask, with regards to signing a waiver, please keep in mind these are all volunteers trying to get back to normal to offer you fun things to do with your Porsche. We do ask for your patience. We're learning as we go. And obviously, um, if you're willing to volunteer to make the process smoother, please do so. Or if you have suggestions on how to do things better, we're always open for suggestions. But again, I ask for your patience as we try to bring the normal PCA back to your life. Without, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.